By the year 2024 and a half, all text will be cyber text because the machines will have taken over. So let's see how we could fit in with them. The first thing you want to do is right click in the media pool, find new fusion composition, hit create, and then you could double click on that. I've got one open already, so I'm going to use it and grab your good old text icon and drag it on the screen. And now you got a text node and name it something. All right, that's good. Let's press one to preview it on the left viewer and go to size over here. Bring this up. There's a free font from defont.com. It's called Vipper Squadrone. Find our font, type in VI, and I see it down here. Now there is a regular version and a solid version. I'm going to go with the solid version. Now it's a little big. I'm going to go to the size and just give ourselves some little breathing room there. So with our text selected, let's go up to the shading tab and let's give it a gradient and let's give this gradient some better color. Click here to add new stops and we could drop this down and change the colors. I'm going with something like this, but this can always be changed after the fact. So I'm going to zoom in here a bit so we can see some detail. I'm using a free plugin. It's called Crocodove. You could get it from Reactor. Just hold down shift and space bar. E X T R. There we go. Extrude. And I'm going to press two to preview that on the other side. Now, what I'm going to do is change the angle. I want it to be more of a downwards angle. I'm also going to change it from solid, which is the solid blue color to original, which is using the original colors, the light. I want to adjust that light angle, the, uh, remove lighting detail. If we zoom in, we can kind of see that a little bit better. So it's rounding out and creating a little bit of a bevel here. It might look weird when you're zoomed in, but when you zoom out, it looks pretty good. Select the extrude shift space bar, A U T O D auto domain. So auto domain, let's preview this by pressing two. So what this does is it gives you a crop without having to use a mask. And I'm going to adjust this slider until I see, okay, this is adjusting the left. So you could probably guess what the other ones do. I'll double click that just to reset it. All right. So I'll bring the bottom up and I'll bring the top down. And now we could merge this with this by clicking the output of the text and dragging it to the output of the auto domain. And we get this merge. Let's make this look a little bit nicer. Selecting the merge and pressing two to preview it. Now let's set the apply mode. I'm going to go from normal to linear dodge. And now I'm basically going to repeat this process. And I'm going to do that first by holding down alt and dragging on this line. I'm going to now take the output of our text, drag it back onto the merge. And we got another merge. We got this auto domain already. So I'm going to press control C, click off of it, press control V. And now we've got the same thing as before, but I can hold on shift and drag it onto this line here. All right, let's keep things nice and neat if we can. And let's press two to preview that. Now for this auto domain, I'm going to click this button to reset everything. And I'm also going to press two to preview it by itself. And I'm going to adjust the top down, something like that. Now I'm going to press the merge and press two to look at that. And also we don't have the extrude. So copy this extrude, control C, deselect everything, press control V, and then hold down shift and drag to pop it in there. And for our merge, let's change the blend mode. Something like screen will work and let's get a bigger view here. All right, and using that process, if you want one more, you could do the same thing as we did for the bottom, but you could do a top layer, but I'm gonna leave this as it is. Let's make an instance of this text for a bit of variety. So select your main text, press Control C, press Shift, Control V. So now you've got an instance and we see this green line lets us know that it is indeed an instance. So let's take Merge 11, press one to preview that on the left. Select our instance, press two to preview that on the right. I want a different font, but these are connected because they're instances. So I have to de-instance the font. So right click on the font name here, click on de-instance. Now you have all the freedom in the world. And I'm gonna use another free font from defont.com. I love it so much, I'm using it twice. It's this font called Mightyen Cremes. Making sure our instance text is selected, click on it, I'll type M. 
All right, there it is. Our text here, it's a little bit wide. I could adjust the tracking, but if I do for one, I do for both. So I got to de-instance that. Right click on tracking, de-instance. I'll worry about making this perfect later. I also have an issue where this overlaps. If I want that, I can keep it. If not, I could go to shading, click on blending, set this to solid, and it's all merged together. I'm gonna leave it at composite because I kind of like the extra detail in there. Okay, so I wanna add a mask to this and I'm using another Crocodove node. So if you have that, you could do this or you could skip this step, but I'm gonna hold on shift and space bar and type in L-I-N-E-S. And you could recreate this lines effect without the Crocodove plugin, but it's just really easy to do it this way. So I select the output, click and drag it onto the blue mask icon. And in the lines option, I'm going to set this number of lines to one and go back to first lines and adjust the spacing, hold down control as I drag if I need more control. So now I think this is getting pretty good. I could drag the softness all the way down if I want. And this is what we got. Let's borrow our extrude control C and I'm going to select this instance text and press control V to paste that and press two to preview it. I think I'm gonna get rid of this light, double click on remove lighting detail, and that's gonna give me a nice crisp line in there. And I think I want a little bit more spacing. I don't want so much overlap of each line. So I'm gonna go back in lines and I'm gonna hold down control, drag the spacing. Now we wanna merge these two together. So I select the output of the extrude and drag it onto the output of the merge. We got this new merge. Let's press two to preview that. Let's adjust the tracking now for our text hold down control, adjust the tracking. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it as lined up as you can. Select this merge and go to the apply mode and let's change this to hard light. At this point, I'm gonna come back into my extrude here and add a little bit more variation by adjusting the length. I don't wanna go too far with it, but I think that's good. I'm gonna find this extrude here, adjust its length. We could also go into this one I am just feeling like my lines here are a little bit bulky. So let's come back in here and make some minor changes to that. I'll decrease the thickness, decrease the spacing. Yeah, I think this looks better. This looks like a bit more of a circuitry type of an effect. What I would do would be to take these nodes and kind of separate them out. You could add an underlay if you want to be really neat, but this is our first section. This is our second section. We're on to our third section. This is going to be more of a background effect, but I am going to select the instance text and instance it again. So I'm gonna press Control C, click off of it, hold down Shift Control and press V, and we got another instance. I don't really wanna see this as text, I wanna see this more as a background. So I'm gonna click Merge 12 and press one. Select this next instance, press two to preview that. I'm gonna add a mosaic effect. So I'm gonna hold down Shift and Spacebar with it selected, type in M-O-S, mosaic blur, press two to preview it. Go from square to hexagon, let's adjust this frequency down. What I'm going to do is add a TV effect here. So with mosaic blur selected, shift space bar, TV, press two. I don't know if I want noise, at least for now. Let's turn it down and go to scan lines. And you want to zoom in here because sometimes it's hard to know how this is working. I think we could go up, let's bring this, and then we could adjust that. So you see, you get them bunched up really close or spread out. Maybe we'll skew it a bit here. Let's switch over to this roll bar section. So bar offset moves this area up and down. We got this bar size and strength. So now I'm gonna take TV3, click its output and drag it up to our previous merge. With our new merge, I'm gonna press two to preview that. And the TV effect is on top. I wanna flip it so it's on bottom. So control and T and now our lines effect is on the background and everything is looking good. But if you want glowing reviews for your motion design and title work, you're gonna wanna throw some glow on here. Okay, so we'll select our merge and press shift space bar. GLOW. I'm going to go with this glow with the three little dots. Press two to preview that. So let's take a look at some of these settings here. I'm going to adjust HV ratio. And when you do that, you're going to get these nice streaks coming out there horizontally. And you want to show those off. So click this gain and drag it up till you gain the look that you want. Also, you can adjust the gamma and the saturation. And you got this relative spread for red, green, and blue. 
find the colors that work for you. We got a nice kind of refracted light effect going on. I'm gonna click on the one viewer and I'm gonna add one more final glow, selecting this glow, pressing shift space bar X glow. You could use any glow for this. I'm gonna use X glow. It's a free plugin. You could get it from reactor. I just like the way this works and I like the saturation controls for it. Let's press two to preview that. So this is just an overall glow. It is very glowy. I'm gonna take this slider, bring it all the way over this slider. And this is gonna give me a, uh, a fall off, just the parts that you want to glow. They're still way too high. Bring this gain down. Before I bring it too far down, I'm gonna start messing with the saturation here and the saturation here. All right, that's too much. And I can take the glow size, bring this up to spread things out. Take the gain down just a bit more and let's see what we got. I may want the hexagons a little bit bigger. I'm going to select instance text. I'm going to right click on size and de-instance that. Let's see what happens when we bring this up. All right, so we're getting more. I'm going to go to mosaic blur frequency down just a bit. And you probably won't be surprised that if you come back to your original text, everything is still live. So some things you want to do maybe for effects is come to this auto domain, start messing with some of these sliders, animate them. If you mess with your extrudes, maybe even coming to your lines and changing the angle. Lot of flexibility here. 